Hello, my name is Wilson Bateman. I'm president of Global Training Edge. What you're about to see is a program called the 10 Steps to Safety Excellence. We designed the 10 Steps after the West Ray coal mine disaster in 1992 in which 26 coal miners were killed. The intent of the program is really to change the safety culture within your organization. The idea in the program or the aim is to start at the senior management level within your organization and work down through the organization with all the managers and supervisors to the employee level making safety a priority. It's 10 steps, it's fairly basic, and it's easy to follow. I hope you enjoy the program. The 10 steps to safety excellence are commitment, the team approach, communication, lifelong learning, program involvement, documentation, leadership, safety memory, hazard recognition, and a proactive approach. Good morning. We're just preparing for this morning's staff meeting. What we're going to talk about this morning is the first step of those 10 steps we talked about earlier, commitment. And on the first step, I'm going to talk a little bit about New Year's and just to, uh, you know, just to, sh to demonstrate the difference to folks. When you think about New Year's, lots of people make New Year's resolutions. They say, well, I'm going to lose 20 pounds or I'm going to buy a new car or I'm going to take a trip south somewhere. But a lot of those things don't happen because they're truly not committed to it. And I want to test their commitment a little bit this morning. I want to find out, are we truly committed to occupational health and safety? Are, are we truly committed on and off the job? So our focus this morning is going to be on our goals and objectives. And our goal is going to improve what we're doing in terms of eye protection. And I'm not even really talking about the workplace. I want people within our organization to be wearing eye protection on and off the job. It's a simple, cheap, and ineffective, or a very effective, sorry, means of ensuring that you're not injured. So what we're going to do over the next couple of days is every employee in the organization, we're going to have a group of folks that are going to be handing out eye protection. And we want to see how truly committed you are. Are you wearing it on the job and are you wearing it off the job? If you're using the lawnmower, you're wearing eye protection. If you're cutting something in the shed, you're wearing eye protection. The idea is commitment on or off the job. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about commitment. Our next step is coming up real soon. We'll see you shortly. That's going to be number two, the team approach. Step number two on the 10 steps to safety excellence is the team approach. What we're trying to do in the team approach is ensure that, the, you know, that everybody is involved in the process. When I say everybody, I mean it starts with me, the very senior level of the organization, all the employees working together. In this particular example, we're working on a lockout procedure. I can't do it in isolation. We have to do it. It's a team approach. If we're going to truly change the culture in our workplaces, then we need to use our teams. We need to get everybody involved. It's been said before, and I'll say it again. It's about employee empowerment, the team approach. The next step will be step number three, communication. That's pretty good. I really like that. I think we're going a long way here. Just sending out some information from the Workers' Compensation Board. That takes us into step number three, which is communication. Really what we're saying here is safety is our number one value, our number one priority within the organization. When you think about it, we need to consistently send that message out. How are you doing it? One of the things I'm doing this morning is sending out information about the workers' compensation session that I just attended. So how you send that message out, what you say is critical. And it's like those other it's like a stool, really. I, I, I use that analogy. A stool has four legs, and to keep that stool stable, you need those four legs operational at all times. One of those legs is going to be cost. One of those legs is going to be production. One of those legs is going to be quality. And, of course, one of those legs is going to be safety. So it's important to communicate the message consistently through the entire organization. Our next step, step number four, see you soon. Okay, our next step is step number four, lifelong learning. And the whole idea in lifelong learning, it applies really in everything that you do. I mean, technology is changing so quickly today. Our work environment is changing so quickly. We have to continue to be learning about occupational health and safety. I've been doing this for 20 years, and I find I'm still learning new things every time I go out into a workplace. If I go into a machine shop or a manufacturing facility or a hospital, 
I'm learning new things. And we've got to take the time to think about what kind of education we need, what kind of training we need, what kind of programs we need to go on. As managers and supervisors, we have to ensure that our employees are taking the appropriate programs, that they're getting the knowledge, the information that they need, that they can use in the workplace to ensure that they're safe. So lifelong learning, it applies to everybody. At the very senior level of the organization, as a person running the enterprise, I need to be thinking about what I need to learn, what I need to ensure that my employees are learning. As a manager or supervisor, you need to be doing the same thing. If I'm an employee out there, like you're going to see this afternoon, operating a piece of mobile equipment, then again, lifelong learning is a process that we need to be involved in. Those machines today are becoming more automated, more computers on board, and it requires more skills. So as we move forward with occupational health and safety, as we, continue to, as we continue to improve, lifelong learning is becoming more important for everyone. What we're going to do next is we're actually going to go out in the field and we're going to see some equipment and we'll give you an opportunity to go through the rest of the steps out in the workplace. Thank you very much and see you soon. Doug, how you doing? Good, buddy. Good. Thanks good. for shutting her down there. Appreciate that. How are things going? Oh, good, good, good. Excellent. I just happened to notice you're running that thing like heck. That's great stuff, man. Great stuff. Listen, I'm just wondering, I'm just doing my quick sort of check around, and I'm just wondering what you got for documentation. How's the, how's the program going? Yeah, sure. No, it's, everything's going good. I got the, uh, the daily log, the daily check. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's all going pretty good, I think. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Good, good, good. So everybody's working away and wearing their safety gear and all that great stuff. Oh, yeah. Excellent. The brain bucket in the cab here. Okay, excellent. And you got your documentation all done, and and things are tickety boo. Yep. Anybody been out yep. around? No, no. Okay, all right, good. So I just want to drop by and say, hey, look, things are going great. Appreciate you guys working safely, and have a great day. Thanks for stopping See you out. later. So what we're doing in terms of the next steps, we're demonstrating leadership. We're out in the field. We're taking a look at what people are doing. There used to be a program called Management by Walking Around, and essentially that's what we're doing. We want to take a look and see how folks are uh, are, are working out there. They're actually working safety, that they recognize that we see this as an important issue. So in terms of leadership, we're, we're demonstrating that. Uh, program involvement, uh, we talked earlier about lockout, and again, it's, it's, a, it's an issue here. So we're going out and looking at how the program is actually working, and we're also thinking about documentation. So if, as you notice, when I did that quick uh, intervention, I asked what documentation the person actually kept in terms of safety, and of course he showed me the log that he used to monitor the, uh, the, the maintenance and the safety issues with the vehicles. So those last three steps in our program are steps five, six, and seven, program involvement, documentation, and safety leadership. And again, that's what we're demonstrating. What you're looking at is an incident investigation. That takes us into step number eight, which is safety memory. The idea in the safety memory is to look at those incidents, near miss, close calls, things that happen in your workplace, spend a bit of time with them, and try to ensure that they don't happen again. The reason we call it safety memory is you're trying to build up a memory for the organization. You're trying to identify those incidents that have occurred that, that could lead to something more serious in the future. So you're taking the time to build up that safety memory. It's similar to as a child when you were growing up. You know, one of the things for me is I had an eye injury, and for the rest of my life, it's made me think about eye protection. It's helped me protect my kids as well and, and, and my clients. So the idea with safety memory is just that, to build up the safety memory for your organization. We'll see you soon on step number nine, which is hazard recognition. Doug's now involved in step number nine, hazard recognition. In our hazard recognition process, what we're doing is we're using a hazard recognition, or we call it a cue card. And the idea with the cue card is to sort of cue up before any, any job that you might want to complete or any task. So as an example, you would take the card, and on the card it has a series of questions. Number one, what's the hazard? Number two, what's the risk? Number three, what could go wrong? Number four, what controls are required? And number five, what do I need to do? It's a simple, straightforward process. It's part of our hazard recognition program. So what you would do is use the card on any task that you're about to form perform. You could also use it at home. So as an example, once you get in the habit of using the card, if you're doing something at home, like cutting the grass as an example, you'd ask yourself, what are the hazards? What are the risks? What could go wrong? What controls are in place? And again, more importantly, what do I need to do? So hazard recognition should be part of everybody's responsibility, again, on every job, every task, whether at work or whether at home. See you shortly for step number 10, the proactive approach.
Step number 10 is the proactive approach. What we mean by the proactive approach is not waiting for things to happen. As you saw the shot pan around, you saw a truck over here in the background, you saw the sand pile, you saw different pieces of mobile equipment. We need to be aggressive in our approach to occupational health and safety. It's just like that continuous improvement model. We have to be looking for things through our safety memory. We have to be doing things like hazard assessment, uh, doing things like checking the documentation, and being proactive so that we don't have injuries and accidents, incidents occurring in the workplace. When you, uh, when you look at it, uh, the stats tell us that over 90% of the injuries that occur are predictable and preventable. That means we need to be more aggressive, we need to be more proactive, we need to take a look out there, identify those incidents, find our weak spots, and continuously improve to make the workplace safe. See you soon for the summary. To summarize today's program, I'd like to take a minute and review the 10 steps to safety excellence. The first one is commitment. The second one, team approach, communication, lifelong learning, program involvement, documentation, leadership, the safety memory, hazard recognition, and a proactive approach. When you start to look at safety, some organizations have said, we have a silent epidemic here. We're having too many unintentional injuries occur on and off the job. We found that over the last 10 years, in organizations that we've employed this process, it's made a difference. It's helped them to improve their safety culture, and again, on and off the job. We believe for you, it can do the same thing. I hope you've enjoyed the presentation, and I hope it helps your organization in the same way. Thank you.